Let's look at the current division. For the current division, we have the uh, is given. So is and all the to given. And of course, also the elements, uh, the admittances here we label the y's. That means we labeled admittances. And uh, these admittances should be known as well. Given is and find find one of these, let's see, i sub ks, right? one of the, the current. And pay attention to here, the i s and the, uh, i sub ks, the i s is the ending current, and the i sub ks is the leaving current, right? Uh, so in this case, we can uh, find these and see if, and this is what we call the current division because this is a part of the, the current, uh, total current i s. And we can find the is based on i sub k s is equal to based on the element constraint for the kth element constraint that should be equal y sub k s times v sub k s, right? And also we know the v sub k s should be equal to v s. So this here, this is the element constraint. And here, based on the KVL, and we have Y sub K S times V S, right? And also, we can replace V S by the I S divided by, so we have Y K S and I S divided by Y E Q S, the equivalent impedance, equivalent admittance because right, i is equal to y times v, right? And therefore, v is equal to i sub s. So here, this is the equivalent admittance. So we applied a few things here, a few steps, and we get this. Uh, so therefore, i sub k s is just equal to the y sub k S divided by, we know the equivalent admittance is the sum of all the admittances, y sub s, y sub 1 plus y sub 2s plus y sub n s. And then don't forget time is the total current. And here again, here i sub k, pay attention to is i sub k s is leaving and i k, i s is entering. Entering that node, right? So make sure when you apply this, all the current here, we have this, right? So this is the general equation for the current division. So let's see if you have a special case, if you only have two elements. Let's see the two elements, sometimes we, you're giving the internal impedance. So in this case, let's see uh, if we only have uh, two elements, you're giving an impedance as Z1, and Z2. And this is very confusing to some students in the past. I don't know whether they, they, they see are still the case. So let's see, not the phaser, IS. So we have a Z, uh, Z sub 2S and Z1S. And let's see, I have I1S. Oh, my tablet is getting. So the current uh, through the first one here is I sub 1 is um, and through the second element I sub 2 s and so based on our current division rule here is I sub 1 s is equal to the total currents and the Y sub 1 s divided by Y sub 1 s times plus y sub 2s times the total current, right? Based on the rule. So that's the key is equal to one. Um, in this case, since we have impedance, so we know one over z sub 1s, that's equal y sub 1s, one over z sub 1s here in the denominator plus one over z sub 2s. This is the admittance for a second element. Uh, so times the is. 
And now if we multiply this numerator and denominator by z1 and z2, z1 and z2, and put a brackets here, z1 and z2. And so in this case, z1 be canceled. I'm left on the numerator as z2 as over now the denominator here, I have a z1 plus z2, right? So the, this one, z1 be canceled, and I left a z2 for the second term, z2 be canceled, I'm left with z1. So in any case, I, I'm having z1 plus z2 on the denominator times the total is. So this is another one really confusing a lot of students in the past. So why do I use the other impedance uh, to when I do the current division? Right, so the, this is very easy to understand. Think about it, if you have two, the, the impedance is very similar to resistance, right? So if you have the uh, the very high impedance path, the the current actually will, in that path will be less, right? So let's say if you have, if you have uh, the lower impedance, this path will have a higher current. So you have to use the high impedance path impedance divided by the total to get the one of through this lower impedance. It's like at the team you had two team members, right? The amount of work is similar to the current carried by each element, or the amount of work you have to do each of you. And unfortunately, your teammate really is very lazy and very high impedance and very low. Uh, productivity over low curve right, for the same amount of pressure you have on your team. And so you have to carry more current or do more work, right? Because your teammate has higher impedance. So then you use the other impedance. But if you use the emittance, then no problem, right? Then you use the emittance, you use a y sub 1 on the numerator and the sum of the y's on the denominator. Okay, I hope that's clear, this concept. And um, Let's look at an example here. So here I have a circuit, I have a current source feeding on uh, the um, feeding the uh, uh, the the um, uh, the three elements, right? I have the let's use this uh, R as 0.5. So that will make the numbers a little bit easier. Uh, rather than two ohms, okay. Uh, so in this case, I have five UT, of course here should be amps, not volts. Uh, for the following circuit with the initial condition, find the equivalent of admittance, let's use admittance, y sub, you know, y eq, instead of z, seen by the current source. And we're trying to find, let's see, the i sub l and, and i sub c. Okay, and in this case, you see I copied the other example. <laughs> uh, so in this case, they, we, we will translate the transform the circuit to the uh, S domain, right? So you have uh, the admittance y sub r and y sub l. Of course, this be, should be a function of s and y sub c. And in this case, I have the i sub s s. So in this case, once we transform it to the uh, estimate, the i sub s, s should be equal to Laplace transform of i sub s t, which is equal 5 over s. And y sub r is equal 1 over r, which is um, 0.5, 1 over 0.5, there should be 2. Uh, the union should be Siemens, if you write the unit y sub l should be equal 1 over z sub l that's equal 1 over 1 over uh, 0.001 s which is 1000 over s and for uh, y sub c is equal 1 over z sub c and z sub c is 1 over c s so in this case this equals c s which is 0.001 s Right. So these are all the emittances. So the equivalent of the emittance seen by the source, we want to find the impedance that's that's also doable, just the inverse 
invert that uh, admittance. So for the A here, uh, Y sub EQS just equal Y sub R plus Y sub L plus Y sub C, which is uh, 2 plus 1000 over S plus 0.001 S. These many ohms, not ohms, Siemens. Okay, so that's the, um, that's for the impedance, that's for the emittance. And let's see, find the current, we need to label the current. So I have I sub L, I sub L S here. I have I sub C T here. I sub C S. And here we don't have any initial condition because we have a zero initial condition. So again here, the circuit when we transform, we don't need to have, have that current source or voltage source associated with each inductance and capacitance, right? And so in this case, let's see, do uh, the, uh, let's see, we do the uh, inductance currents first. So this I sub LOS, that should be equal Y sub L over the Y EQ, that times total current, I mean total IS, and that's equal 0 0.0, 1000 over S, this is the emittance for the inductance, and 2 plus 1000 over S plus 0.001 S times the um, 5 over S. If you do the partial fraction expansion I did in the Google Colab notes, you can uh, check on that. And so this one would be equal 5 over S minus 5 over S plus 1000 minus 5000 over S plus 1000 square. And if we do the inverse Laplace transform of I sub LT, that should be the inverse Laplace transform of I sub LS. That's equal to uh, five minus five times e two minus thousand t, and minus five thousand t times e two minus thousand t, and times u t. Right. This, if you put the u unit, should be amps. And for the uh, for the capacitor voltage here, and make sure you. Pay attention to the current direction here, and this is also entering current to this node, as same as entering current as the source. So in this case, you need to put a negative sign there, and I sub C S, because the both are entering currents, this one here, and these are both entering currents. You have to, uh, as you apply that the KCL, you get that negative sign, remember? And so therefore I see that should be Y sub C over Y EQ and times uh, the total current, put a negative sign here. And in this case, that should be negative uh, Y sub C is 0.001 S here. Um, minus negative 0.001 S divided by uh, 2 plus uh, S over 1000 over S plus 0.001 S times 5 over S and you can also do the partial fraction expansion do the PFE and do the inverse Laplace transform right? Laplace transform and then you can uh, you can then you can get the uh, the I sub C I sub C T right so that's the how we do the current division and make sure you understand if you have two elements when you do the current division if you use the impedance you use the other impedance divided by some of the impedances right if you use admittance I mean the two three there's the same right if you find the current through the K uh, an emittance and you just use that emittance on the num numerator and divide it by the sum of the emittance on the de denominator of the total right but if you use uh, the impedance you need to be very careful the only special case if you have two elements if you have three there's no special case you have to just follow 
either use one over that z divided by the sum of the one over z's, right? And uh, so this is the, uh, the current division. If you, if you understand, if you understood for the phaser, this is really easy. If you didn't understand, and this is your last chance to understand this, right? So we kind of repeating the things we did for the phasers, but you still don't understand this. We're gonna carry over to the other course. You're gonna you're gonna struggle with the other course as well, right? Um, so I hope you make sure you understand this. All right, it takes just maybe a few more minutes. Yeah, just to do a few. I mean, you can redo the example we had, uh, and we also have practice problems. Make sure you understand. Okay, that's it for this lecture. And as as always, no matter what you do, you just need to uh, keep going. Right, never stop. I'll see you next lecture.